Welcome to GDs. And this is the flight attendant season one. Season starts with flight attendant Cassie spending time between flights, getting drunk, and hooking up. We also get to see her brother, Davy, and we learn that he is coming with his family to New York, and he is looking forward to catching up with her. While Cassie, on a flight to Bangkok, flirts with a handsome passenger, Alex Sokolov, and when the flight lands, Alex gives her his number. And they go out partying, and they spend the evening together. They both get drunk and end up making out in Alex's room. And the next morning, when Cassie wakes up, she is horrified to find Alex dead, in bed next to her, with his throat slit. Cassie calls her lawyer friend Annie, though she doesn't give out any details to her. But Cassie understands that the circumstances will make her the prime suspect. In addition, she is unable to remember any events from the night, and being scared. And afraid of getting arrested, she cleans up the mess and leaves the hotel. Cassie is able to get back to her flight, and as she flies back, she starts having flashbacks from her memories, and it oscillates between her childhood and the time she spent with Alex, with Alex helping her remember things. In addition, she also learns that her ID is missing, and by the time she reaches back to the states, the death of Alex has been discovered. And the cabin crew is called in for questioning by the FBI. Cassie tries to run and avoid questioning, and it makes her look suspicious. The crew is questioned by FBI agents Van and Kim. Megan, one of Cassie's colleagues, lets them know that Alex and Cassie were flirting. And as Cassie is questioned, she remembers that there was a third person with them on the night Alex was murdered. But for now, she tells the agents that she never saw Alex after he left the flight. The feds, not having any details from Bangkok yet, allow the crew to leave for now. Cassie keeps having conversations with her vision of Alex. This is when she remembers that the name of the person they met that night was Miranda, and Cassie, thinking that Miranda might be Alex's business associate and she might give her more clarity on what happened that night, goes to Alex's office. But she finds that no one by that name works in his office, and being afraid of her lies being exposed, she runs out from the building. The FBI contacts her, wanting to question her further. Cassie, afraid of the FBI, goes to Annie and tells her everything, and she wants Annie to be her lawyer. Annie is in shock with all that has happened, and we also learn that Annie represents a few crime bosses in New York, and being a good friend, she agrees to help her. Cassie promises Annie that she will not drink and will be on time for the FBI meeting, but being an alcoholic, she gets drunk. Parties and becomes friends with Buckley, a man she met in the nightclub, and they end up sleeping together. And she is late the next morning for meeting with the FBI. Agent Van and Kim learn that the hotel security footage during the murder window in Bangkok is gone. The agents push Cassie for information and show her the photos from Alex's office and from Bangkok. And Cassie, in panic, tells them everything she remembered, but says that Alex was still alive when she left his room. FBI, not having any proof against her for now, allow her to leave. But Agent Van is convinced about Cassie being guilty. While in Bangkok, Miranda was able to get Cassie's information from the bar, and she is making her way to New York. Cassie, knowing that the receptionist at Alex's office knows more, tracks her in a bar, and with help from her, she realizes that Miranda might not be a witness, but indeed the person who killed Alex. Whereas Miranda. In order to know more about Cassie, breaks into her apartment. Cassie, being in Rome and in one of her flashbacks, remembers Alex talking about her mother not liking his last girlfriend, and Cassie thinks it might be Miranda and that his mother might know more about her, and she decides to go to Alex's memorial to find Alex's mother in order to learn about Miranda. And when she returns back, she figured out that someone broke into her apartment, and Cassie, being afraid, goes to Annie's apartment. And is surprised to find that she has a boyfriend, Max, but Annie doesn't consider him to be her boyfriend, as she doesn't believe in tags. Annie wants Cassie to stay with her. In addition, she also learns from her contacts in the FBI that the Bangkok police are recreating the murder bottle, and soon they will be able to pull prints from it. She also tells Cassie that when she approached Sabrina to know about Miranda, she denied knowing Miranda or any conversation she had with her. Cassie. Trying to get answers about Alex's last girlfriend, thinking that it might be Miranda, attends Alex's memorial to meet his mother 
and she tricks her colleague Shane Evans to accompany her. Meanwhile Annie, trying to know more about Alex's company, takes Max's help. Who hacks into their servers, and Max learns, that Alex's company, Unisphere, is owned by the Sokolov, and that they are using it to launder money. And Annie, finding out that Cassie, is at the Sokolov residence, warns her, and asks her to leave immediately, telling her that many of her clients' money is managed by them, and they are very dangerous people. But Cassie, decides to investigate anyways, and she learns from Alex's mother, that he did not date Miranda, but as she snoops around, she hears Alex's mother and father talking about Miranda, and destroying documents from a company called Lionfish. And she steals the shredded documents. And was only able to make her way out, as Annie afraid for her life, asks for a favor from one of her clients. And on her way back, Cassie spots Miranda. But she is able to get away, because of the presence of cops on the train. On the other hand, we also find out that, Megan, Cassie's colleague, is entangled in corporate espionage, and is stealing information from her husband's computer, and is providing it to the Korean government. As they are making her feel important, while she feels neglected by the rest of the world. While Annie, is informed by her boss, that she now owes the firm's client a favor, for getting Cassie out of the funeral unharmed. Meanwhile Cassie, with the help of Max, was able to put the documents back together, and it reveals, that Lionfish and the Sokolov, flew a plane from Teterboro, New Jersey to Portland, Maine once a week, with a very short layover. And Cassie, to find out more, gets herself on their next scheduled plane, with the help of the pilot Nate. But before boarding, she meets her brother, and his kids, who have come to New York. And she gets them gifts, despite their parents saying no to it. And when she boards the plane, she learns, that there are never any passengers on it. And that the pilots pretend that they saw passengers. But as the plane lands and the cargo from the plane is unloaded, Cassie grew suspicious, and decides to look into the cargo, and she learns, that the plane is transporting missile parts. On the other hand, Miranda gets a visit from Victor, who tells her that she created a mess. And was not able to retrieve the information required from Alex. And now she needs to leave, and head back to London. Miranda, requests him to give her some more time, but he shuts her down, and tells her to return to London. Whereas Cassie, returns back to have dinner with her brother. But they end up fighting, with Davy blaming her for being irresponsible and an alcoholic. And Cassie, telling him that he is jealous of her childhood, and of her being closer to dad. And Davy tells her, that her version of their childhood, is quite different from what actually happened, and he leaves. And as he leaves, Cassie, has flashbacks of their childhood, and she starts seeing the event, from her brother's perspective. And she gets quite disturbed by them. And being desperate, not to be alone, she tries contacting her friends, but when no one answered. She ends up hanging out with Buckley. And when she calms down, she thinks that, now with all this new information, Sabrina might open up, and tell her more. But at Sabrina's apartment, Miranda reached before Cassie. And when Cassie knocks at her door, she hears arguments in her apartment. And she calls the cops. And as she comes down, she is horrified, to see Sabrina's dead body fall from her apartment. Cassie, being questioned by the feds, tells them everything she discovered. But without proof, her statements are just conspiracy theories. Agent Van, suspects Sabrina really did commit suicide, while Agent Kim has her doubts. Meanwhile Annie, is called by her clients to pay her debts, for the favor she asked in getting Cassie out of the Sokolov house. And is tasked with giving an inmate a message, that his family will be taken care of. And give him an envelope which had pills. And Annie had to go through with it, as she had no choice. On the other hand, Cassie, in her flashbacks, remembers that Alex had a home office. And she convinces Max to help her investigate. And they go to Alex's apartment, to look for evidence, so that they could prove the Sokolovs are dirty, and, to clear her name. Inside his apartment, they find an address for Lionfish, and they decide to investigate. And as they reach the address, they find an empty and abandoned building. But when they went inside, Max finds servers, and as he looks, he finds files containing information, about everything that Cassie had claimed so far. They also discover that Alex, transferred a large sum of money from their account, into a secure account. In addition, it also contains IDs, of people who have been murdered so far, and also includes IDs of Miranda, and Cassie. Max, realized that their snooping has been caught. And someone knows they are there. And they run out of the building. But someone tries to run them over, but Max saves Cassie and in the process loses the information he copied. Though, 
Max survives but is badly injured and is unconscious. Cassie, thinks that the flash drive will prove she and Max were doing good work. However, it is missing from Max's pocket. And Annie, upset with what she had to do, and seeing Max in hospital, tells Cassie, that they are done and it's over between them. And this sends her into a drinking spiral. And Cassie looking for support, calls Buckley, and they hook up, and then go on a bender together. Agent Van and Kim suspecting Cassie, have an agent tailing her, but Cassie notices him, which forces him to leave. And as he continues following her, he is murdered. Cassie, has a flashback of her childhood, and with Alex in her head, she deduced that her childhood wasn't how she remembered it. And that Davy was treated badly. Cassie, tries to make up with Annie. But she refuses, as she points out that they really don't know each other, and their friendship doesn't work. Cassie, deflated, tells her, that she'll be sorry when she will hear the news of her being dead. Cassie's and Buckley's bender, finally ends when they are arrested. And Cassie, sobering up in prison, calls her brother and apologizes to him, and they emotionally mend fences. While Annie, not liking what she was forced to do, quits her job at the firm. Meanwhile, Megan's husband, is called into work due to computer issues. And he finds out, that he is suspected of providing the North Korean government with sensitive information. And as he talks with Megan, he realizes that Megan is the one who has been stealing the information. On the other hand, someone attempts to murder Miranda, and Miranda knowing, that she is no longer trusted by her organization. Posts Cassie's bail, and approaches her with a gun. Telling her they need to talk. Miranda suspected Cassie to be the killer, and talking with each other, they both figure out that neither of them killed Alex. And Cassie learns, that Alex was not aware of his parents' illegal operations. And once he figured it out, he transferred the money from the company's account into a secure account. And they have been looking for the account number and security code to access that money. Mirinda, knowing Cassie doesn't have the account details, tells her that Victor, must have hired his enforcer, Felix, to kill them, and he is the one who has killed Alex, and others for the money. Having all this information, Cassie goes to Annie, and they were able to mend fences. In addition, she asks Annie if Miranda can get a deal for the information. But Cassie, realizing that this might lead Annie to be in danger, decides it is better for her and Miranda to go on the run, rather than to involve her. And as they decide to run, Miranda goes to meet her contact in a church, and they have to wait in an AA meeting. And the meeting triggers a flashback for Cassie, and we learn, that she feels that it was her fault that her father died. As they were both drinking while he was driving, and she has kept this as a secret. And Cassie, finally acknowledges that she has a drinking problem. And Miranda reveals that she brought her to the AA meeting, hoping she could remember something. And after confronting her guilt, Cassie, remembers where Alex might have written the account details. And they go to retrieve it. And were able to find the information, in the book which Alex had with him. But they are followed by Felix, causing them to run. And in order to get away, they must jump to the roof of the next building. And Miranda in the process loses the book. And, Cassie sees that Felix, is really Buckley. Cassie and Miranda, come up with a plan, and Miranda wants to use Cassie as bait, in order to catch Felix. On the other hand, Max wakes up, and Annie confesses her love, and acknowledges him to be her boyfriend. And Annie, getting to know about the pen drive from Max, goes looking for it. And she was able to find it. Whereas, Cassie's fingerprints are found on the bottle in Bangkok, and now the FBI has proof of her being guilty. Meanwhile, Miranda learns of Victor's location and confronts him, and she kills him, and takes the book from him. But this causes her to miss the flight to Rome. And Cassie, reaches Rome alone. On reaching Rome, Megan, and Cassie, share their secrets with each other, as Megan decides to go on the run. While Cassie, takes help from her friend, Enrico, in getting a gun. And as he gets her a gun, his grandmom interacts with Cassie. And talking with her, made Cassie realize, all the mistakes she had made because of alcohol. In addition, she was also able to forgive herself for her dad's death, realizing it was not her mistake. And when she leaves with Enrico, who took the gun, she leaves behind, bottles of alcohol. Meanwhile, Buckley following Cassie has also reached Rome, and when Miranda arrived on the next flight, he knocks her out before she could reach Cassie. And back in States, Annie, turns over the flash drive to Agent Van and Kim, which exonerates Cassie, and provides them with all the necessary proof. And they all realize Buckley is the killer. 
and realizing that both Cassie and Buckley are in Rome. They start making calls in order to apprehend Buckley. And as Cassie returns to the hotel, she, in her flashback says her goodbye to Alex. Knowing she has all the answers, and now she is in a much better headspace. In addition, we also see Megan taking a cab and running away. Buckley, was hiding in the washroom, and he waited for Enrico to leave. And as he leaves, Buckley confronts Cassie, and he tells her, that he has been stalking her since Bangkok, and indeed he is the one who has her ID. And as he tries to go after Cassie, Enrico returns. But Buckley was able to overpower both of them, and before he could kill them, they are saved by Shane, as he shoots Buckley. And Shane reveals, that he has been working undercover for the CIA, and has been investigating Megan for selling information. Cassie learns, that no one else was found in her room, and she knows that Miranda disappeared. And as she returns home, Davy, was waiting for her, and she promises him, that she will be different from now on. And when she meets Annie, she tells her that she has decided to be sober. In addition, she finds Alex's book, with a message from Miranda, informing her that she took the money. And as the season ends, Shane tells Cassie, that the CIA is interested in her, becoming a human asset. And Cassie, reflects on her journey and the scenarios in her mind. As she closes the dark part of her life. And now she is happy and looking forwards towards the future. Thanks for watching. And if you liked it, please subscribe.